Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 26th of July 2019 and we are asking the question who is Boris Johnson and can he make Britain great again? Just two days ago, Alexander Boris de Pfeffel Johnson, a.k.a. Boris Johnson, became the UK's 77th Prime Minister, and according to the President of the United States, is seen as Britain's Trump. But many ask, who is he, and can he truly deliver for Britain? And similarly to the US President's slogan, Make Britain great again. Well, Boris was the Member for Parliament for Henley from 2001 to 2008. Then he became Mayor of London from 2008 to 2016. Then elected again as the Member of Parliament, but this time for Uxbridge and South Ryslip since 2015. And then from 2016 to 18 served as Foreign Secretary. Resigning that post in a dispute with the then Prime Minister over Brexit negotiations and awaiting his moment on the back benches, he has since succeeded in staving off a number of potential candidates and eventually becoming leader of the Conservative Party on Tuesday and Prime Minister on Wednesday. Johnson identifies himself as a One Nation Conservative and has been associated with both economically and socially liberal policies. What many are unaware of is that he was born in New York City to wealthy upper middle class British parents. They had the foresight, however, to register his birth with both the US authorities and the city's British consulate, thereby granting him both American and British citizenship. Due to his family's wealth, Johnson was educated at a host of privileged schools and colleges, including the European School, Brussels One, Ashdown House, and was awarded a King's College scholarship to study at Eton College. He read classics at Balliol College, Oxford, where he was elected President of the Oxford Union in 1986. He began his career in journalism at the Times, but was sacked for falsifying a quotation. So a bit of a naughty boy. He later became the Daily Telegraph's Brussels correspondent, with his articles exerting a strong influence on the growing Eurosceptic sentiment among the British right wing. In 2016, Johnson was a prominent figure in the referendum on Britain's membership of the European Union, becoming a leading figure in the successful Vote Leave campaign. Though critics and dissenters stated behind the scenes that if it had been politically expedient for him, he could have easily led the Remain campaign instead, suggesting that perhaps he did not really hold any fundamental political convictions. He has also been criticised by figures on both the left and the right, who have accused him of elitism, cronyism, dishonesty, laziness and using racist and homophobic language, some of the accusations similarly levelled against President Trump. That said, he has also been regarded as some as, quote, the most unconventional yet compelling politician of the post-Blair era in British politics, unquote. Well, Johnson took no time in appointing his cabinet on the 24th of July, describing it as a, quote, cabinet for modern Britain, unquote, with the media branding it, quote, an ethnically diverse but ideologically homogeneous statement of intent, unquote. Among other appointments, Johnson made Dominic Robb, the first Secretary of State and Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, in other words, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary. He appointed Sajid Javid as Chancellor of the Exchequer 
and Preeti Patel as Home Secretary. He increased the number of ministers attending the Cabinet to 33, four more than had attended the May Cabinet. If you actually have ever been in the Cabinet room as we have, or looked at the Cabinet table, to be blunt, it's hardly large enough to seat 25, let alone 33. It's a very uncomfortable table to sit at, with that number, most certainly. So we suspect there may be two rows in some cases. One quarter of those appointed were women, and the Cabinet set a new record for ethnic minority representation, with four Secretaries of State and two additional Ministers coming from minority backgrounds. Nearly two-thirds of those appointed went to fee-paying schools, and almost half had attended Oxford or Cambridge universities. Thus, to some degree, the accusation of elitism potentially holding true. Johnson is an important figure, certainly for this moment in time. He has advocated that whether it be a hard Brexit or not, Britain will be departing the European Union on the 31st of October 2019, come what may. This means that his relationship with, with President Trump will be of paramount importance, as a new trade deal with the United States will be essential for the UK so as not to suffer too adversely when it withdraws from the European Union. He has reiterated his determination of ensuring the UK will leave the EU on the 31st of October in his maiden Prime Ministerial speech yesterday in the House of Commons. And to be fair, it was a most positive, upbeat and often humorous speech, a marked contrast to his more sombre predecessors. He has already made promises of increasing the police force by some 20,000 officers over the next few years, and it's been announced earlier today that an autumn budget will be forthcoming, aimed at propelling the economy forward, suggesting either tax cuts or greater government spending, or possibly even both. Johnson has his critics, however, including one of our most learned Inner Sanctum contributors, Dr Richard North, who regards Johnson as a buffoon and an oaf, and quite possibly a disaster for this country. We fully, fully understand why he believes this, but part of us cannot help but think that perhaps someone who is unconventional but not stupid, and who will push the boundaries, may indeed have greater success than those who governed before him. Indeed, this is a leap of faith. But he did do a good job as Mayor of London. And one thing is certain, if he fails, he will be dumped very quickly by his own party. For that, one can be certain. There are two major issues facing the new British Prime Minister. One, to either renegotiate a much better exit deal with the EU, which to succeed by the 31st of October is extremely unlikely, and to get Parliament to vote on it with support, or to simply allow a hard Brexit just to happen. There is some talk that he may call a general election to get such a deal through. However, we aren't convinced that he can trust Nigel Farage sufficiently enough to enter into a pact, as Nigel has proven less than reliable on a number of occasions in political affairs. Also, one should ask, will he need him? If he allows a hard Brexit to occur naturally, in our view, he could sit on his hands, do nothing, and Brexit happens by default, though this is untested legally. He can call a general election then in 12 to 18 months, being out of the EU, and argue there is now no need for a Brexit party. However, this plays out. What will be crucial is that Boris gets on with President Trump. A favourable trade deal with the United States will be seen as crucial, and frankly, there is no reason why this cannot happen. Whilst both leaders are somewhat vain, charismatic, maverick in nature, and crave the limelight, they are also both transactional, and can potentially see some political and economic merit in working closely together. This, we believe, will happen. There are many announcements that come out of 10 Downing Street over the next few days, and looking at markets generally, 
their response to our new Prime Minister so far has not been seen as devastating as some feared it might be. The FTSE 100 index is actually up some 35 points at 7,524 as we produce this video, and sterling versus the dollar stands at $1.24, only one cent weaker than just before his election and appointment. And sterling is unchanged against the euro. So far, we just have rhetoric, but in politics, rhetoric can shape the mood. Providing it is then followed up with action, we may indeed see results. We cannot, in all honesty, accurately predict how far this Johnson train will go, as there are so many variables which could move in either direction. That said, the one thing we can be sure of under a Johnson prime ministerialship, and that is, it will certainly be one hell of a ride. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.